Good morning, welcome back to Dango's Outdoors YouTube channel. So we're three weeks into the lockdown now and I am climbing the walls, honestly. I had this week booked off as holiday anyway and the weather is brilliant out there. I would have done three, maybe even four nights at my local gravel pit and no doubt I would have caught. It's perfect zig weather, single hook baits, that kind of thing. Yeah, so I'm feeling it this week, but you know, I'm gonna do a little bit of fishing stuff in the kitchen anyway. And today we're gonna look at my barbel rig. So over the past two or three years, you'll have seen I've been doing a lot of barbel fishing. And this is a rig that I started using when I began my barbel fishing journey and has pretty much worked throughout. I've tweaked it a little bit and it is more or less, if I show you that, just kind of like a basic type hair rig, but you'll notice a few little differences on it and I'll talk you through those as we do them. So yeah, let's get into it and start tying this rig. So this is the hair rig I use for pretty much all my barbel fishing when I'm using pellets and boilies as a hook bait. And something slightly different that I do is the hair is actually tied from braid. So we'll start that now. First thing I need to do though, is put a little bit of hook silicon on the braid, because we're gonna need this later on in our rig. So let's cut a few mil of that off. Now it's quite tricky threading the braid through the tube, and so what I do is put a loop of old mono in, put the braid in there, and then just pull it through. There we are, sorted. Now I've got to tie the loop in the hair, so what we do is fold over the braid, form a circle, and using a baiting needle, pull the loop back through the circle. And now we'll put a hook bait on the hair. So you can use whatever you like as a hook bait. Pellets and boilies are some of my favorites, and in particular, a 14 mil halibut pellet like that is really good. These pre-drilled ones, a little tip for you, is to put just something on the baiting needle beforehand. That's just a little bit of rubber. I've cut off an old bit of plastic corn. Just acts as a stopper and stops that pellet sliding up and down the hair and knocking the hair stop out. There we go, so that will now stay on really well. And you can glue the pellets to the hair if you like. I just find that with drilled pellets, this is really easy and they don't come off like that. And I tend to use either one or two 14 mil halibut pellets, perhaps a boily or two, or some of the eight mil pellets. I'll put three or four of those on the hair rig, no problem. And they're great hook baits in the summer and autumn time for barbel. Take our hook, which in this case is a size six wide gape type hook. They're my favorites. I tend to use either eights or sixes, whatever I'm comfortable with. And I tend to stick to the bigger hooks because a bigger hook, not only does it catch hold easier in the fish's mouth, but once it goes in, it stays in. It's gonna hold on to a lot of the fish's mouth. So they're not gonna pull out as easily as a smaller hook. And I've generally got a philosophy with my fishing that if you're gonna hook fish, you've got to land them. That's the safest thing you can do. I actually had a run of fish last year where out of six barbel that I caught, three of them had hook links or line wrap around them and it was all far too light. You know, little 14 size hooks with tiny little hair rigs on them, six pound line, and no wonder no one was landing a fish and getting snapped off. So yeah, I tend to stick to heavier tackle, land them quickly, don't exhaust them and get them back nice and safe. We've got our hook, get the hook silicon, and just poke the hook through it. Be careful not to catch the braid and not to poke out the side of the tubing. Once you see the hook point appear from the other side, just pull on the braid, make sure that it's not caught over the point of the hook and then pull the hook around, getting the silicon over the barb. There we are. And now we set the length of our hair. So if I put the tube in, just where the hook begins to bend, pull on the braid, and leave, I don't know, about a sort of 10, 12 mil gap between the hook bend and the pellet. That seems about right. And you can always make the hair shorter or longer by moving the silicon up and down the hook. So you may be thinking, how do I secure this hair in place? And all I do is just tie a two or three turn knotless knot. Knot. 
So there we go. So you might be asking yourself, why bother with braided hair if you're just going to tie your hook link from mono anyway? Well, a couple of reasons. The first reason is a practical reason. I've had mono hairs come undone sometimes, the hair loop snaps, whatever, especially when you're using quite thick nylons. And the second reason is I think having that extra movement with the hook bait not only makes it look more natural in the water, but when it goes in a fish's mouth, the hook bait can move around, it can fold back on itself almost like a blowback rig and leave the hook in the mouth for a little bit longer so it's got more of a chance of catching hold. Just a little theory of mine, but it doesn't hurt. It only takes a few moments to, to tie. And yeah, even if it means I catch one more fish out of a hundred, that could be a double figure battle. <laughs> now for the hook link, and I tend to use monos. I find that they don't tangle as much as braids. I, I would use a coated braid for the whole of a hook link, but that would be very expensive. And I'm a tight Yorkshireman. Also, I quite like the fact that the hook link is a little bit weaker than the main line. So if it does get snagged up, I can snap the hook link and all I lose is a hook and not the rest of the rig. And this is what I tend to use. It's um, Guru N-Gage in 12 pounds, so nice and strong. And this isn't a, a product plug. I just find that this one is quite stretchy compared to a lot of other nylon hook links on the market. And I've caught double figure barbel, carp to over 30 pounds on this. It's what I use for surface fishing and zig rig fishing. And yeah, I've just, I've just found it's, it's nice and reliable. So use whatever you've got confidence in, but that is my preference at the moment. Just gonna cut off about three foot of this because eventually the hook link is gonna end up about two or so foot long. Go back to our hook with the braided hair, pass your hook link through the eye of the hook, leaving a couple of inches, and then just whip a normal five or six turn knotless knot over the top of the braid. There we go. Trim the tag ends. You've got two to trim, the braid and the mono. Now to improve the rig, and neaten it up a bit, I'm gonna put some more silicon over the eye of the hook. There we go, all complete. That's the hook section done. Now, the function of that silicon over the eye of the hook, it does a couple of things. First of all, it stops that knotless knot from unraveling and becoming weaker. When you're using quite thick monos and big hooks where they're not gripping the mono in the eye, you need something to kind of hold it in place, so putting a tube in over top just stops it from unravelling on itself. It also means that the nylon doesn't bend back towards the point of the hook too much. You don't want it in like that, closing the gate. You want it pretty much going in line with the eye of the hook there, and that'll catch hold in the fish's mouth a lot easier. So let's now look at the other end of the rig. Personally, I want this hook link to be about two foot long, maybe 18 inches to two foot. I don't necessarily think you need much longer than that, unless I'm using a maggot feeder or whatever, where I like the hook link to have a bit of movement. But typically, yeah, 18 inches to two foot is about right for me. So that's where I've got it there. And what I'm gonna do is tie quite a big loop. So I've left myself a decent bit of tag there, and I'm gonna do about a six inch loop. So we fold the line over, and again, make a circle and this time we're going to pass the line twice through the circle creating a double overhand loop knot and there we are there's our big double overhand loop so this loop knot actually serves quite a few purposes first of all it's how i actually attach my hook links to my main line what i do is i loop to loop this to a ring swivel it also kind of helps to prevent tangles. This little bit here is a bit stiffer than the rest of the hook link, so it'll push it away from the lead system on the cast. And that loop there allows me to thread a PVA bag down the hook link. And that is my feed really. That creates the attraction around my hook bait, leaving a little trail of pellets. Six mil krill pellets and eight mil halibut pellets, nothing smaller than that, because I feel they'll just get washed away in the current, especially on a big river like the Trent. As for lead systems, it's a lead clip for me. I like the versatility of them. If I'm changing swims, I can just 
take the tail rubber off, take the lead off, put that in my pocket and then it's not banging against my rod while I move. And then I can put on a, a heavier lead, a feeder, whatever if I want to. And when I get to where I want to be, just put it back on, thread the tail rubber over and we're sorted. I like the fact that the lead isn't directly on the main line, which when you're using heavy four, five, six ounce leads even, they can flatten and damage your main line, but like that, it's not sat on the line at all. And I like the safety aspect of it. If the line breaks, all that can come off, or even the lead can come off without the line break, and you can sometimes still land a fish, which I believe is the safest thing to do. Yeah, you could argue that perhaps I lose a little bit of sensitivity over a running rig, but even when I've been using maggot feeders, I still see the bites from roach because you've got quite a lot of play there before the lead or the feeder moves. So yeah, not, not a problem to me at all. And I like fishing specimen style, as you've seen. Two rods, heavy lead, and just wait for it to go around. I'm using pellets and buoys typically anyway. So if I get a bite, they hook themselves and the rod just rips around, which I really enjoy. At the end of the lead clip, I've got a ring swivel there. Hope you can see that. And that's what I use to loop to loop my hook links on. So just put the loop through the ring, put everything back through it, bang, we're sorted. And that's even easier than using like a clip or whatever. And that is typically how I use this rig a lot with what I call the bomb and bag, you know, <laughs> heavy lead, big hook bait with a little PVA bag of pellets, cast about where the fish are. I don't necessarily like to feed swims. I just rove around a lot until I find them. And for me over the past couple of years, that's been really successful. On the small rivers near me or down on the Trent where I catch a lot of fish. Yeah, that is, that is the one. So that's the rig, hope you enjoyed it. Do what you want with it, you know, change bits to suit your fishing, use a feeder, scale up or scale down, depending on the situation you're in, very versatile. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a thumbs up if you did and yeah, let me know there's some life out there. I'm climbing the walls during this lockdown, so yeah, this sort of thing keeps me out of trouble for a little while. Yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time.